All right, there we go. I don't know if it was a good idea to put a professor first in a five minutes talk session, but I will, I will be brief, I, I promise. And if it's not, not brief, it's Maggie's fault. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot tomorrow about what we're doing here in Utah to help guide investments in outdoor recreation infrastructure and how we've really leveraged and relied on OpenStreetMaps data to do that. But I wanted to kind of highlight one specific part of our analysis that we've put together over the past several years that has um, really led a lot of our state investments in outdoor recreation. Uh, as was talked about in the panel this morning, people don't think about which type of trail they're going to, whether or not it's managed by a specific agency, uh, one or the other. Uh, they often think about the types of opportunities that they want to have, the types of experiences that they want to have. And, and that's one thing that we've tried to do, is try to look across agency boundaries, look across uh, different mandates that guide those different agencies, whether they be the Park Service or the Forest Service, and, and really rely on those data sources that, that transcend those boundaries to try to quantify where those different outdoor recreation opportunities are provided across a very large and very diverse landscape that is Utah. And so the ways that we start to think about this is thinking about outdoor recreation opportunities as being uh, conceptualized on a, on a graph that you can see here where we can map the demand on one side, so maybe the number of people that are visiting a site uh, from low to high, and then the amount of infrastructure that's at that site also from low to high. If you think about the times that you go out to participate in outdoor recreation, maybe there's some types of opportunities that you're looking for that don't ro you don't want to be around a lot of other people. You're looking for sol solitude, you're looking for wilderness. Um, there's types of, those types of experiences that you just want to, to have to yourself. And there's also the other, other opportunities where you want to be with your family and you want to be around as many people as possible. So how can we actually plot out on a map uh, all the places that exist on, on the on the, in the state of Utah uh, the opportunities to have these different types of outdoor recreation experiences? Some areas um, those that have low demand, where there's not a lot of actual use occurring, and there's low infrastructure, they might be needing to have some more infrastructure put in, some more investments by, to the state to actually spur demand. Areas that have a lot of high demand and, and no infrastructure, they obviously need that infrastructure just, just to meet the demand, so we're not causing environmental damage from the use actually happening in places where it's not being designed to happen. Then there's areas where we have low demand and a lot of infrastructure, and these are areas where we might have built a lot of infrastructure in the past to accommodate previously popular outdoor recreation activities, and those outdoor recreation activities are no longer no longer very popular. They're no longer in that, that much demand, so those places go unused. And then we have these areas where we have high demand and a lot of infrastructure, and if you have a chance to spend much time around Utah, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of the places like this, um, our mighty five national parks, um, a lot of the areas up our uh, canyons here in the central Wasatch can be categorized in this map. So what we've done in, in this analysis to help guide what will be the, the outdoor recreation strategic plan for the state, or what is the outdoor recreation strategic plan for the state, is really rely on you as a community of open street mappers to identify where, these, where this data is, where the outdoor recreation infrastructure. We've compiled a whole bunch of open street maps data from campsites, dump sites, showers, restrooms, drinking fountains, trailheads and parking lots to quantify the amount of outdoor recreation infrastructure that actually exists across the entire state. And we've also paired that with reliable and authoritative data from federal agencies and state agencies when that data is available. We also look at demand data from other open data sources like Flickr, which is a social media platform that allows individuals to share their uh, photographs online, as well as population density to actually try to quantify where across an entire landscape um, these places might be. We put all these data into a statistical analysis where we do a principal component analysis of both the locations of the OpenStreetMap uh, defined outdoor recreation infrastructure points or features and the concentration of uh, demand at, for those features. We grid the entire state in a five kilometer grid to try to quantify where these, where these bins might be, where might you have the areas where there's low demand versus high demand, where might you have the areas where there's low, low infrastructure versus high infrastructure. And the end result is a map that looks something like this. Where we're able to quantify for the entire state, really relying heavily on OpenStreetMap data, uh, 
every single piece uh, of, of land, public land within the state into one of these four quadrants. And so this is what we've done to help guide outdoor recreation infrastructure investments in the state. This is part of our outdoor recreation strategic planning process for the state as a whole. It goes to a variety of different state boards that make investments in outdoor recreation infrastructure. So it's the point b being, it's really all built upon the data that is provided by you as a community of open street mappers. So thank you very much for doing that and I'm gonna share a lot more tomorrow about our work. For the uh, Utah Recreation uh, talk, I was wondering, or I noticed that the map you displayed kind of towards the end of your talk that had the color classifications of different types of zones, I noticed there were some areas that were not colored, and I was just wondering if there's, there's a reason why they weren't colored. looked at areas that were open and available for public recreation. 